Hello, I'm Devin Brody. I'm Juliana Capitulo. I'm Gabrielle Martinez. And I'm Kathleen Wynn, and we will be presenting about the determination of caffeine in coffee using HPLC with UV detection. Uh, Dr. Ng gave us permission early during the semester to study caffeine in coffee instead of catechins. Introduction. So caffeine, a methylxine, is a central nervous system stimulant that can be found in a myriad of foods and beverages such as coffees, teas, and dark chocolates. Caffeine is of particular interest due to this compound's potential health benefits that can be easily integrated into one's diet to improve their overall health and um, also removed if there are health risks that um, some are more susceptible to than others. The prevalent use of caffeine amongst Americans additionally makes it critical to study given its widespread use as a legal stimulant. I know many of us start our days off with a cup of coffee or use um, caffeine containing compounds or drinks to get us through the day. Um, the bottom left hand side, that figure shows um, the chemical structure of caffeine. As you can see, it is an aromatic compound. So health benefits and risks of caffeine intake. Previous studies investigating the effects of caffeine consumption in humans have shown that regular consumption of caffeine may be associated with decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, increased fertility, improved performance for um, athletes when taking pre-exercise. Um, and we can see this on the bottom left-hand figure with um, a rowing test that um, was looking to see does caffeine boost performance. Um, the data on the black dots would indicate with caffeine and the red um, triangles are without. And so clearly we can see that with caffeine, they rowed farther than those without, indicating that um, caffeine boosts performance for athletes. Um, it can also sharpen focus and potentially be associated with a decreased risk for cardiovascular diseases. However, caffeine intake has also been shown to be associated with heartburn, anxiety, physical dependence on caffeine, insomnia, um, and as the bottom right-hand figure shows, it can raise blood pressure, um, which can be particularly dangerous if one already has high blood pressure. Um, and taking more caffeine certainly would not help that, um, as well as digestive issues. So analysis method. For, so this study, we will focus on caffeine concentration in coffee, which evidently <laughs> is a caffeine urge drink, to the use of HPLC and a diode array detector, in which the most effective procedure for the um, quantification will be determined through analysis of um, looking through the literature and seeing what will be the best experimental protocol based on um, what other studies have done in the past. So HPLC, or high performance liquid chromatography, functions to separate the analyte and the diode detector functions as the detection portion in which the amount of caffeine in the sample can be quantified. The diode detector measures the absorption in the UV region where light from two lamps is merged and shown onto a cell. Light intensity is then converted into a signal for each distinct wavelength. Summarization and comparison of prior methods and procedures. The most common column used for the HPLC separation were the C18 and the C8 columns. These were in references 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. While liquid-liquid extraction was the most prevalent form of extraction in the literature of HPLC UV detection, there was one study, reference 4, that did use solid phase extraction. From this literature, it's evident that the liquid-liquid extraction will be the most beneficial for this study. The standards used across all of the previous studies vary greatly in methods. In one instance, reference 1, preparation of the standard was not even mentioned in the experimental protocol while in reference to the details of the standard preparation were clearly outlined. In one study, reference three, they chose to prepare their standard stock solution using a combination of sugars, such as galactose, glucose, and mannose, in which they were the only study found to do so. The other studies primarily used organic compounds, such as acetic acid, formic acid, and methanol with water in the combination to create those standard stock solutions. Selection of methods and procedures. One, selection of sample extraction procedure. The procedures from references one, two, three, and five were analyzed to determine the best liquid-liquid extraction methods. Four out of the five studies applied liquid-liquid extraction techniques, but reference four instead opted for a solid phase extraction. Liquid-liquid extraction is more beneficial to the isolation of caffeine which will be analyzed after its separation from coffee in this study. 
references two and references three did not supply strict instructions on how they performed their extraction. In reference two, the procedure focused more on a performance review and analysis of a new fast HPLC UV vis method that was conducted at three separate laboratories using two types of HPLC machines. In the study, the main focus was on the results of the fast HPLC method, and they were not on the sample extraction methods or the procedures that they used. So in this study, the liquid-liquid extraction method from reference five will be the most pertinent to the caffeine extraction. Two, selection of HPLC system and separation detection conditions. In both reference one and reference two, the analytical proceedings were operated by highly specialized, complicated, and expensive chromatography systems. In reference two, the study was focused on the analysis of a new fast HPLC method and was using equipment that isn't useful or necessary for this HPLC analysis of caffeine. In reference one, the HPLC apparatus was equipped with dual solvent pumps, injection valves, and other devices that were not necessarily needed for this study. The HPLC apparatuses from reference four and from reference five were simpler, more cost-effective HPLC instruments that is more viable for this study. Also, the instrument that was used in reference five was paired with diode array detectors, which increases the speed at which absorbance data can be collected. The HPLC columns used in reference two and in reference three are C18 columns. These octadecylene columns offer higher retention times. The C18 column also has a higher density than that of the C8 column. That higher density increases the surface area in the column, which will slow down compounds moving through it. C18 is preferable when the compounds being analyzed are larger long chain fatty acids or more complex molecules. Caffeine, however, is a small organic molecule that is analyzed faster and more efficiently with C8 columns. The HPLC columns used in reference two and reference three are both the C8 columns. These columns offer shorter retention times, they separate small organic molecules, and they're gonna be more efficient overall than the C18 system for the use that we are doing in this study. In references four and five, the preferable C8 columns are used. So the instrument picked for this study was the Aglanet 1260 Infinity 2 with a C8 column from reference five. Three, selection of preparation of standard solutions. Reference five was the only study that gave a numerical concentration value for preparing the standard stock solution of caffeine. Reference one mentioned the molecule's percent purity and the temperature at which the stock solution was stored but it didn't give any hard concentration values. Reference two and reference three briefly mentioned the original weight of the sample that was used to make the stock solution, but it didn't mention the range of concentrations that were used for its analysis. Reference four gave specific concentrations for the stock, but the preparation required repeating sonifications to the solution and was overall less informative and more complicated than reference five. So the preparation of standard solutions was pulled from reference five. So in this experiment, there are a total of 45 green coffee bean samples, which are taken from high, medium, and low altitudes. Um, the processing of each coffee bean was dependent on the area and the technique of washing and sun drying that they were going through. And so there are three main parts to the experiment. And the first is a coffee sample preparation for UV vis analysis. Um, the first step is to ground and screen 20 grams of green coffee bean samples through a 300 micrometer sieve to achieve a uniform mixture, and then storing that so that sample in a uh, in room temperature. Um, it was also to weigh a gram of it and then add it to a 100 milliliter distilled water and then stirring the mixture for an hour and gently heating it to 70 degrees Celsius for easy extraction of the caffeine from the sample solution. Um, and then last step in this part is to filter the solution using a Whitman filter paper to achieve a clear solution. The second part to this experiment is to extract caffeine from using HPLC analysis. Oh, it's, 
it's extraction of caffeine for the HPLC analysis. So you would put 0.2 grams of each coffee bean sample um, into a centrifuge tube and then extract using a five milliliter of boiling water and shaking it for 30 minutes on a shaker at 200 RPM and then centrifuging that mixture for five minutes at 3600 RPM. After it, the supernatants is clear, carefully dedicated into a second centrifuge. You will then return that residue into the tube and extract for the second time with five milliliters of boiling water. And then you would combine the supernatant and adjust the volume to 10 milliliters. And then you would treat um, 1.5 milliliter portion of the extract with three microliters of the 20% aqueous lead acetate solution to precipitate out any polysaccharides, proteins, and other colloidal materials from the extract solution. Next, you would centrifuge the mixture for five minutes, and then you would filter the supernatant directly into a chromatographic vial through a 0.5 micrometer syringe filter for chromatographic, chromatographic analysis. Lastly, the last part to this experiment is determination of caffeine um, of HPLC. So you would determine the alkaloids in the green coffee extract um, using the HPLC system to a diode array detector, which is the DAD, and then you would introduce five microliters of the sample into it, achieve the separation on reverse phase um, using the C8 column that is maintained at a 25 degrees Celsius. And then the analysis should be carried out under isocratic conditions using the 90% deionized water and 10% as a nitrile at a flow of 0.3 milliliters per minute. And then you would allow that mobile phase to flow for three minutes between each analysis and then wash and recondition the column every time. You would collect the chromatographic data for the caffeine at 200 80 nanometers. Um, you would determine the quantitative data for the caffeine, create the calibration curve using different, using five different concentrations of caffeine in a range of one to 100 uh, milligrams per liter. And the last step to this whole experiment is to analyze any triplicate from three sample extracts. So each triplicate sample should be analyzed by HPLC as well. To prepare the standard solutions, we chose reference five. The stock solution will be prepared by dissolving five milligrams of pure caffeine in a 50 ml volumetric flask. And this will be diluted to the mark with boiling distilled water. The stock solution will have a concentration of 100 milligrams per liter. For the standard solutions, we decided to create five with the concentrations 10, 30, 50, 60, and 80 milligrams per liter. All the standard solutions will be prepared in a 10 mil volumetric flask. So for instance, to prepare 10 milligrams per liter, one mil of the stock solution will be pipetted into the 10 mil volumetric flask, and this will be diluted to the mark with boiling distilled water. To find the concentration of caffeine and coffee, a calibration curve will be used. First, five microliters of each standard solution will be introduced into the HPLC. Then, five microliters of the extracted coffee sample will be injected. From the standard solutions, a calibration curve will be generated with peak area versus the standard concentration. This calibration curve will have a best fit line and using the best fit line along with the peak area of the extracted coffee sample, the concentration of caffeine in coffee can be determined. For instance, if the peak area of the extracted coffee sample is about 60, then at the best fit line, the concentration of caffeine in coffee would be about 40 milligrams per liter. This is just an example of a calibration curve and this is mock data. So our total budget for this experiment is $45,857.55. Um, and the things that are calculated into the budget are these items, which are the HPLC system, the column, the chemicals, the three chemicals that we would we need, the green coffee beans, the centrifuge, and the 300 micrometer sieve. And then these are the vendors that we would purchase these items from. And lastly, the last column is the prices that these items would be. And lastly, this 
is our reference page for the amount of references we use for our project. There's a total of five. And with that being said, this concludes our project presentation. And thank you so much for listening.